and sophisticated men and women. I did not ask for anything from mother. As soon as I went to her, all my sorrow and misery vanished completely, and I felt a supreme serenity of mind, which I had never experienced before. Oh, those days were spent in heavenly bliss and joy. One day, at the mother's place at Jairambadi, a minstrel, Haridas Vairagi of Desha, came and sang a Bengali song to the accompaniment of a violin, broken violin. A free English rendering of the song is given below. O oh, Uma, my darling, what good tidings I hear? 
people say you are adored in banaras as annapurna is it true o gauri when i married you to shiva he went as a beggar from door to door for a morsel of food but today how glad i am to hear you are now the queen of queen of the world seated by his side and they called my naked shiva a madman how much abuse i had to bear from everyone now i hear that door keepers guard his palace and gods like indra chandra and yama hardly can see him shiva used to live in the himalayas many a day he got his food by begging now he rules over banaras and is as rich as kuber is it you who have brought him all this good fortune no doubt he is very rich now else why should gauri be so proud she does not cast her eyes even upon her old children and turns her face away from radhika when the minstrel finished singing the song girish ghor shami niranjananda and others who heard it could not restrain their tears the mother too with all her women companions was shedding tears it recalled the story of the early life of holy mother when shri ramakrishna was often referred to as the mad son in law by the people of jerambati and its neighborhood when her own parents repented giving her in marriage to shri ramakrishna and her neighbors pitied her pitied her and expressed sorrow at her miserable fate the song drew tears from the eyes of the listeners as it aptly applied to and conjured up a vision of the early life of shri ramakrishna and shri sharda mani devi the holy mother i heard from girish ghosh that for over an hour all remained spellbound and their eyes glistened with tears but those happy moon breaks came to an end holy mother used to travel back and forth between her calcutta and jerambati residences one day we heard that mother was leaving for jerambati after kali puja on the day of her departure girish ghosh came to bid her farewell he did not utter a word and with a serious countenance he called yogananda and went directly to the holy mother we all followed him full of emotion and deep reverence he prostrated at the feet of the holy mother and with folded hands said mother when i come to you i think that i am a little child coming to its own mother had i been a grown up son then i would have served my mother but it is quite the opposite you serve us and we do not serve you you are going to jairambati to serve the people even by cooking food for others in that village kitchen how can i serve you and what do i know about service of the divine mother girish voice was choked and his whole face was red with emotion he again said mother you know our minds which we ourselves do not know we cannot go to you it is through your grace and kindness that we come you come here to see your children whenever you wish to come here please do not hesitate for a moment and we your children will always be happy to see our mother and shall deem it a privilege to render you whatever service you will graciously allow us to offer here is it no time for it short period for me
Good morning. Today we are celebrating Saraswati Puja and uh, devotees of Sri Ramakrishna know that our Holy Mother is often thought to be incarnation of Saraswati. In fact, Holy Mother is regarded as Lakshmi, Goikun, Tahote, Lokhi, she is regarded as Kali and also as Saraswati. So today we will little discuss about the Saraswati aspect of Holy Mother. So Sarada Saraswati. Who is Sarada? Sarada means, the very word Sarada means who gives Sara, Sara da, one who gives da, gives, what does she give? Sara. Sara is the essence, essence of knowledge, who grant, that's called Sarada. Very, her very name is uh, Saraswati. That's, uh, and one is Sarada with, uh, there are two names are Sarada. One is who is, whose advent is during uh, autumn, it's, uh, Sarada, during uh, spring, like, uh, that's called Sarada, Saradvitu, you know, Vasanat, autumn time. So that is also Sharada, and also another spelling is who gives knowledge. Holy Mother was divinity herself coming to this world. Sri Ramakrishna is considered an incarnation of God. So Holy Mother is inseparable from Sri Ramakrishna. Yathagne tahika shakti Ramakrishna istitahiya. She is like the burning like the fire has the power to burn and uh, like the God works everything through the power. That power is, the Shakti is the feminine form. When Sri Ramakrishna is avatar, the all work of avatar are done by the power and that power is Holy Mother. Sri Ramakrishna works all his thing in this world. Ah, he's not giving imparting knowledge, he's attaining samadhi, he's making disciples, he's installing a new, um, new way of um, religious practice. Uh, all this power comes from Holy Mother. That's why Sri Ramakrishna often is said, Holy Mother is said, Ramakrishna Jayatayini Ma. Who gave the glory to Sri Ramakrishna? It is Holy Mother. Holy Mother is the descent of divinity on earth. Once, Holy Mother was sitting in a place in Kothar and she, she, one person devotee went to see him, see her and she was in different mood, in a high very ecstatic mood. The devotee didn't speak, just watch her face, face. He, her, she was looking in front but the eyes were seeing in front but the mind was far away roaming. When she came to little consciousness, she asked, When did you come? She said, Just now I came a few minutes ago, Mother. Mother, but what were you thinking so long? She said, You see, we have to come again and again. There is no way that we can uh, be spared from this coming back again and again to this world. Whenever incarnation comes, he has to bear all the sufferings of the world. And we are also bound to come and have the suffering of the world. And there is no excuse, there is no sparing from this for incarnation. Because he created this universe. Universe is God's child. And he has to take care of it whenever it has some problem, he has to come. Yada yada hi dharmasya glani bhavati bharata. Then I have to come again and again. Sri Krishna said in the Gita. So Sri Ramakrishna has to come again and again in different forms, in different times and suffer. And along with him, I will also have to be born and suffer in this world. There is no way there is an escape from this. I was thinking that, says Holy Mother. So whenever incarnation comes, the power, the Shakti has to come. And this time it was Holy Mother. Holy Mother Sarada Devi was uh, was a little different uh, in this age of our than other Shakti that came with other incarnations of God. Because she was left behind Sri Ramakrishna and had to do a lot of work that Sri Ramakrishna had left for her. So that was her specialty as mother. Sri Ramakrishna once said, 
you know who is holy mother who is sarada she is sarada saraswati she has come to this world to impart knowledge and he said that as saraswati she likes to decorate and one ornament has to be made for her and the ornament that holy mother wears on the, the breast that the bangle she wears was made by sri ramakrishna having the diamond facets on his uh, on his um, body of this ornament the this bangles so that was made by sri ramakrishna for holy mother because she is saraswati now who is saraswati saraswati the very word says saraswati one who imparts sara what type of sara what type of essence what type of knowledge swa swa is the knowledge of the self one who imparts knowledge of atma or knowledge of the self is saraswati so uh, in the upanishad it is said there is there are two types of knowledge dwe ved vidya vedita be para chaiva aparacha one is lower knowledge another is higher knowledge what is apara knowledge apara the lower knowledge it is all the knowledge that we get in the world and in description there in the vedas it is says grammar syntax the sentence how to form and the literature all these niruktam chandasa all that is apara knowledge all the knowledge that we get from the things in the world we learn we become knowledgeable all this is called lower knowledge vedas says that what is higher knowledge yatra para tad aksharam adhigamyate that is the para knowledge higher knowledge which takes us to aksharam imperishable state which makes us immortal immortal that is which makes us realize that we are immortal that is the higher knowledge and saraswati gives all kinds of knowledge saraswati represents all kinds of knowledge learning skill and she is called vag devi not only the education but she is the goddess of speech the knowledge that we have that we express that is also by the power of saraswati and she is also the knowledge of all crafts all arts music dance who is uh, the presiding deity it is saraswati through her it comes and ultimately saraswati is the one who gives the knowledge of the self saradati saraswati also can be sudasavati it is full of flow water sudasam is water in fact there was the river saraswati which now dried up there is a proof um, that there was a river which was flowing and there is no river now but the course of river is seen from the satellites that there was a flow of river that was the river on the bank of which all the vedic knowledge had developed and the the civilization had grown like mohanjodaro harappa before that there was the civilization on the bank of mother saraswati saraswati is very much eulogized in the vedas there is a prayer for saraswati at the river in fact in the vedas saraswati is said it is said ambe tama that is devi tama nadi tama saraswati saraswati is mother supreme she is the best of rivers she is the greatest devi greatest goddess all the are inscribed for saraswati so saraswati also means means which flows what does flow from saraswati so what flows is knowledge and thought the th- knowledge that we have it has to flow then there is the grace of saraswati that's why in the upanishad it is said in the tri upanishad swadhyaya pravachana abhyam na pramaditabhyam don't neglect to have study self study and also don't neglect to spread that knowledge pravachana have you knowledge yourself and also spread that knowledge let there be flow of knowledge then there is the grace of saraswati saraswati often described as the one who removes our darkness jadyanthakara paham jadyanthakara the inertia and knowledge who apaham who removes oh mother please take my pranam my salutation so what is jadya inertia the dullness darkness not understanding the truth 
that is the darkness and that darkness that the inertia is removed the darkness removes and gives us the knowledge of the brilliance of the knowledge self knowledge we find the saraswati having in many picture four arms saraswati we find having in vedad in one hand and mala haste svati kamali kam vidadatim padma sane santitam like that you see the mala of a uh, crystal small beads in one hand and the veda in another hand has this particular mali kam with the thing but mala is in the top and veda in one hand and you find it somewhere in water in one hand and veena in another so they all are representatives of different parts veda of the knowledge see the repository of all knowledge when she is placed we can have the everything that is needed to be known we can have see the repository of veda she holds the veda Saraswati is also considered consort of Brahma, Brahma who created, Brahma who gave the knowledge of Vedas first, and Brahma created from the knowledge of Vedas, and that knowledge of Vedas is held by Saraswati in her hand. From where that knowledge comes? From the Saraswati. So what is that Mara representing? If Vedas are the whole knowledge that she has, she is the embodiment of knowledge. What is Mala? Mala is for spiritual practice, for what we do japam mantram dhyanam prayer all those are also see the representative of that the knowledge will come through spiritual practice that is also mother saraswati and what is that water for water for what the water does it it also quenches our thirst and also it cleans mother saraswati's grace will help us to clean our mind that is the mala and that is the water sometimes they say and what is veena for veena for music for joy joy of the self knowledge is represented by veena veena all the fine arts all the this um, beautiful things like music literature all are the repository of mother saraswati when sri ramakrishna said See, Saraswati has come to impart knowledge to this world. How did Holy Mother evolve in that uh, motherhood and impart her knowledge? We you know when she was very small girl, and we, you know before her birth also, one red um, sari wearing little girl comes to her mother, um, Sama Sundari Devi, in uh, near Jairambati. And she comes down from the bell tree and says, "I am going to be born as your daughter." So divine person she saw and she said, "I am going to be born as your daughter." And Sarada was born after some time. And when she was born, she was very special um, girl. And she was small girl. And she had gone to Shiko nearby village. And there were other boys. A fair was there. And there were all girls on one side. There were boys on another side. And someone just was uh, teaching um, Holy Mother and said, "There are so many boys there. Can you find your husband? Would be husband. Who is your husband there?" And Holy Mother, it is said, she pointed out to one boy, the sitting among the boys, and that was Sri Ramakrishna. Holy Mother, at the age of maybe two, three. That that was the age, but that was all pre-planned. Holy Mother was not distinct and separate from Sri Ramakrishna. She was like the fire and the power of burn, burning fire and giving warmth. That power of giving warmth was Holy Mother. And when Sri Ramakrishna had gone through sadhana, and for him possessed by love of God, nothing else other than Mother, rubbing face on the ground, Mother, when will you show me? Food, forgot food, forgot daily things, and all was consumed by love for the, to have the vision of divine mother. People thought he got mad. And when one is so inebriated with the love for God, people want to change their course. And people thought that if we could give him in marriage, maybe he would. Come to the worldliness, and you will have the responsibility of wife and children, and become worldly, and you will forget all its elements. Will go, and it was said that he become almost mad. Now people are searching for a bride for Sri Ramakrishna. Already he was known as to be so much consumed with love for God. Already known as a mad, uh, he become mad for the love of God. Who will give in marriage to? They were searching here and there. That, was, and he was consumed with man. 
love for God and in such cases people say no 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 what you are talking about marriage I am I am nothing to make me worldly I am renouncing the world only God is for me people generally say that way that son will be renouncing the world because he is mad with God world is nothing for that it doesn't attract but Sri Ramakrishna somehow heard that oh they are searching for a bride for me and say oh I heard that you are searching a bride why are you searching and here and there you will find nowhere go to Mukherjee's house in Jairambati there is one girl already said that for me Kuto Bandhasi it is already said for me how does he know he never went to Jairambati before that he never sees Sarada but they went there and they spoke about uh, the marriage and Sarada age was that time only 5 plus just 5 6 years of age and it came it happened they agreed Mukherjee agreed to give to Sarada to um, in marriage to Sri Ramakrishna. At five, it was not marriage. In fact, it was like betrothal. So, um, the, but the ceremony was done. Marriage was done. Sarada was living at home. So, this reunion, it was not the marriage. It was the reunion of two divine souls. The one supreme soul which appeared as two souls and came in two body and were what to impart knowledge and peace on this earth and they had to come together to perform a huge task of re-establishing the religion. The true religion again has to be brought on the track. Otherwise man will be human beings, human race will be diverted and will suffer a lot. How to save from suffering? That is the cause that Holy Mother said, Sri Ramakrishna has to come again and again. I have to come again and again. There is no way, no escape. What for? Because of the love for the world. And what is the world? World is the creation. The human beings are the children of God. And God will have to take care. And in that process, he has to suffer. He creates this type of world. What to do? If he had created all the people happy, loving, pure, honest, and there is no suffering, all enlightened, then there was no God. God do not have to come. But he creates the world, imperfect world, where people are not perfect. But all are his children. He created in the image of God. Man, human being are created in the image of God but he didn't give all God he did not only he didn't really give the divine quality all divine qualities he has given but also he has hidden the divine quality to be manifested that Maya thing comes and all his, his thing Maya also he creates and then he has to come back again and again to show the way and this is all the play going on and we have Mukti when we grow, we attain knowledge, we attain Brahma Jnana, then no more coming. But what about God? What about Sri Ramakrishna? What about Jesus? What about Holy Mother? They have to come again and again because there will be few people who will be liberated, but others are there, all are our children. And when, whenever there is ignorance, there is suffering, God has to come. And Holy Mother and Sri Ramakrishna became together. Now, Sri Ramakrishna brought Holy Mother and she was 14, he brought him, went to Dakshin Jairambati and brought him to um, Kamandapur. And there Holy Mother's training started, you see. Holy Mother was so finely trained by Sri Ramakrishna, who is always absorbed in the divine thought. And there he started training how to behave with seniors how to love juniors, what should be the etiquette, everything he taught to Holy Mother. It's, it's so much so that when you travel by boat or go by a train, how to take care of the luggage, how to be careful about those things, small things all the Sri Ramakrishna had in mind. The incarnation this time came, not only just to have mercy in God, but practical everything, how to live in the world with all the care for the world and also how to be united with God in your heart. So that was the complete full manifestation of divinity, living happily in the world and yet not dust by the world and live with perfection in the worldly things. Not that when Sri Ramakrishna said, you see when I go somewhere, uh, I don't forget to um, bring back the things even though when, when dancing my cloth falls down my um, well, west, but I remember and you guys just forget the things. He never forgot anything. He used to keep everything perfectly in the place. He used to be clean, everything nicely done. Although he was always taking the name of mother, that was the perfection of Sri Ramakrishna. Worldly things 
as well as these in spiritual things. So Sri Ramakrishna's training starts in uh, Dakshineswar itself, and he said, "You see, you have to be flexible. That flexibility he taught. Jokhon jamon, tokhon jamon. You have to be practical to deal with the people according to the person, according to the situation, and according to the time." What time? What you have to do? You have to be intelligent enough to deal with the situation. Not that it is said, and you stick to that. The the word of the book, the law of the book. No, you have to apply your intelligence to deal with the situation according to the condition of that situation. Be flexible. Be wise. Put your knowledge there. You utilize your intellect there, and come up with the solution for the problems that come. That Sri Ramakrishna said, Holy Mother often used to say, "Jokhon jamon, tokhon jamon, jekhane jamon, shekhane jamon, jar shonge jamon, tar shonge jamon." According to person, you have to deal according to the time and according to the situation. That all Sri Ramakrishna taught. Also, he taught how to make wigs. Once they put uh, Holy Mother used to cook for Sri Ramakrishna there itself, and um, Holy Mother and uh, other household members. And there was no curry made, and some spice was not put there. And Sri Ramakrishna ate that and said, "I don't find that spice put in the curry." He said, "Oh, that was not there, so he put. We, we made without that." Why do you do that? Only one spice worth of spice you could have sent someone to buy and put there. Things should be perfect. That was Sri Ramakrishna saying. If that curry needs that spice, it had to be put. See the perfection of Sri Ramakrishna in the things of the world. That is the complete, total, absolute incarnation that came into for us to guide us in the ways of the world, to guide us to God Himself. Holy Mother was so much training. Only 14 years of age in Jayadambati. Everybody said your husband has gone mad. That type of person. And from there on. The association with Sri Ramakrishna says, "He says, I always felt as if the peace of Peter is set in my heart. There was no worry, no problem. Always I was in peace and joy forever after that. That was Holy Mother was gifted that thing by Sri Ramakrishna during his training of in the worldliness and in the spirituality. Holy Mother came to Dakshineshwar in 1972, and." They all told that uh, he has gone mad. Now he is going to meet a mad person. How will she say? Everybody, even his parents were saying, "Whom did you give marriage to a mad man? Knowing fully, you gave. She will suffer all her life being married to mad men." Holy Mother knew that Sri Ramakrishna love is guidance. How can he be mad? But people were saying so much. She kept all the way walking from Jairamvati to the Chinnai. So it was a long way, and she was hardly a teenage, and like I think eight to ninety years old. And that time she comes, and uh, but Sri Ramakrishna seeing her, invited very nicely. Said you came late, but the Baba had already passed away. If you are there, he will to take so much care of you. But he made him sit, live in his own room, and he used to. Do all the service to Holy Mother. He um, took every care of Holy Mother, and Holy Mother also served him. Now, this uh, way of how they, they uh, saw each other in different ways. Now, one day, Sri Ramakrishna suddenly asked her, "Have you come to make me a worldly man?" Sri Ramakrishna asked this question. It was such a question that any other person will be blushed and very upset in this. What will she see? Ask wife, being asked by husband, have you come to make me a worldly man? What does he mean? We are husband and wife. We have to live in the world like a world, like a like a married person. But the holy mother, what she says? No. What should? Why should I do that? I have come here to help you in your path to achieve your goal. That was Sri Ramakrishna wanted, and what was the goal of Sri Ramakrishna? To spiritualize the whole world so that everyone finds peace and joy in the knowledge of the spirit. And Holy Mother said, "I have come to help you to achieve your goal." All her plan, Sri Ramakrishna would leave her life early. Holy Mother would stay longer, and his way of teaching had to be imparted again to the people, disciples. Will be coming in many great number after Sri Ramakrishna left the body. 
And exactly that happens. After Sri Ramakrishna leaves body, so many people are attracted to the Ramakrishna, others to the ideal of Sri Ramakrishna and to Holy Mother. Whoever came to Holy Mother to have initiation, she will give mantram. And power, a very powerful mantram. It's not like anything else. One person, one was in Kuli in Vishnupur. Somehow saw him, saw Holy Mother. Somehow he recognized and felt like having mantra from this. How did he recognize Holy Mother's greatness as divine being? Many people couldn't see at even all the divinity. She looked like very ordinary woman, village woman. That person equally said, Mother, I wanted to take initiation from you, mantra from you. Holy Mother said, don't worry, come here. He she asks and gives mantra there itself. So much of giving knowledge, giving the way for knowledge, that was Holy Mother's kindness. That's why it says, Karuna my mother song was sung in the morning, beautiful song. Then the opening song that was sung, see, you are Parama Prakriti, you are Sarada Saraswati, but you are above that, you are Karuna my, you are full of kindness, Mother. That love, Mother's kindness aspect, the Mother's gracious aspect, so much evident in the life of this incarnation as in the Holy Mother, is not to be, not, we have not heard in other things. She is all for helping everyone. That is Holy Mother. Sri Ramakrishna was very happy. That was the purpose of coming to this world. And that was Sri Ramakrishna made people very, very happy that I have come to help you to achieve your goal. And one day Sri Ramakrishna was also Holy Mother. Now it's the turn of Holy Mother saying, before that in Jairam, but you see how the Holy Mother was full of knowledge. Once uh, Sri Ramakrishna uh, said to Holy Mother when he was in Jairam, uh, come out of court, and Holy Mother was also there. And he was all saying, Holy Mother was inside the room, and Sri Ramakrishna was talking with others, and so that Holy Mother also can listen. He was training to have the renunciation. And that time, Sri Ramakrishna said, you see, children are born and they die. See, few days, it's so much joy. After that, so much suffering. So one should not have that wish for anything, not for even for children. That was Sri Ramakrishna was trying to teach up him to become a free from any desire to have a children because they're plan, they would divide the whole world with their children. They didn't need to have their own children, you see. So Sri Ramakrishna was just saying, that's just Holy Mother listens to that. Then, uh, Holy Mother, then, then Holy Mother was listening and they said, if you one is born again, another son is born, they die. You know, child mortality rate was so much there during that time. And every time the child died, it was so much suffering, Putra Shoka, Putri Shoka, the greatest suffering in the world. There is no other suffering greater than that. So, but Holy Mother from said from inside, will all children die? Everybody born and dies? Then Sri Ramakrishna said, I thought Holy Mother is very innocent and very naive. She has so much knowledge, she understands so much. I didn't know. Oh, I have set my foot on the head of his snake. Then wood is coming up. She's so knowledgeable. That's how Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother's knowledge. She could even contradict sometimes Sri Ramakrishna. You see, she didn't accept everything. Not that everyone died, if all children die. If you have five children, then two die, three remain. That type of thing, Holy Mother contradicted Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna prayed that. That, that was, I thought she, but she has so much knowledge in her belly, she said, pete pete putti, that's what in Bengali we say. <laughs> Hidden knowledge, we didn't know that she is knowledgeable, but she has so much knowledge. So Holy, Holy Mother would be asked, Sri Ramakrishna, now she says, Holy Mother's time to ask, how do you look upon me? Sri Ram, Holy Mother was pressing her feet. And so Sri Ramakrishna said, the one who is in temple, one who is in Nahabha, that is his own mother, was staying in Nahabha in the second floor at that time. And one who is praising my feet this time, I see them as my Divine Mother, Ananda Mohi. The full of bliss, the Divine Mother, full of bliss. And truly I see them, Sutta Sutta, truly and Perfectly I see that all are, you are none other than my Divine Mother. And she was that Divine Mother. She was Divine Mother in the form of Holy Mother, taking care of Sri Ramakrishna. Every time, everything. She used to, her life was so much dedicated to the care of this incarnation. You know incarnation, how this, how this incarnation comes in the world? Sri Krishna said in the Gita. She said, I assume this body by... Mm, taking 
by taking my um, part in the in the prakriti prak, swam prakritim avisthaya sambhavami yuge yuge i assume this prakriti and i fall under this prakriti and then assume this body we are bound they are by their will they do it and so they are under the power of prakriti so when they get incarnation they are also under the power of maya something though they are the lord of maya but they assume as if they are under the maya so when their incarnation it becomes a part of this mahamaya that is the holy mother has to take care of sri ramakrishna now holy mother takes care of sri ramakrishna she has to put her half her life for the in 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 our time that was the sadhana beat so holy mother practice sadhana not like sri ramakrishna would in panchavati lot of dhyanam um, meditation and kuti vadi yet in vikalpa samadhi in vedala yet to practice so many uh, tantra um, things holy mother sadhana was connected with her daily work he did sadhana in navar he did sadhana she did sadhana in the sinestra in in um, jayarambati in um, Barbadar in Nilambar Bhavad um, house everywhere where she lived was a lot of sadhana. Her daily routine, if you listen, she used to get up at three o'clock and um, then meditate for one hour, facing south in Nawab, and then go to take bath and all that at four o'clock, come back, then do one and half hour of puja and prayer, one and half hour in the morning. After that, she used to cook for Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna had to eat between ten thirty and eleven. So whatever things, special things are needed, very soft rice and all those things, very whatever is special curry she needed, and she used to cook that. After cooking, she used to take food herself and feed him. Why did she go herself? Because Sri Ramakrishna used to go into samadhi. Even while eating, he may go into samadhi and not eat. That was the care that Holy Mother had to take, and she had to talk here and there, other things, other worldly things, so that he eats. Sri Ramakrishna life have to save by giving food that who will take care of this holy mother mahamaya mother saraswati and sri ramakrishna was fed in that way and she took care of all that sri ramakrishna moves from dakshineshwar to shampukur who is there taking care of sri ramakrishna it is holy mother when sri holy mother didn't come in the beginning then who sri ramakrishna said can you bring her who has um, this nose ring um, here and she will take care of me sri ramakrishna says to his disciples showing that he had cancer and he could speak that way so holy mother in 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 dakshin um, in your um, kashipur before that in shampukur if you go to shampukur you find at the top in the terrace a small room that was holy mother like nahaba very small room in the terrace how much hot it be in summer you can imagine that and there she was to be there all day she was to be there and cook for sri ramakrishna take her care take everything and she will be there her prayer was continuing so this was her daily routine after giving food to sri ramakrishna then she was uh, she would Make pan for me to leave for him, and then she would take a little rest, and herself will eat something at one or two p.m. and then little take rest, and then again evening things start. How to cook in the evening? And evening also Sri Ram gets that the evening guests used to used to come. Sometimes his guests would have their own preference. And this, when Narendra came, she had to make big thick roti. When other comes, thin roti. Some she had to make um, chickpea um, um, dal, some other mook dal. So everyone was specialty. And Holy Mother, small room, her bedroom, her kitchen, her drawing room, that one room, one like eight feet by eight feet, very small room, and that was her laboratory, her samsara. And she used to take care of everyone who came to Sri Ramakrishna. Even before Sri Ramakrishna sent the news that someone has come, can you cook for for him? Holy Mother had seen that person going from the window of her door, and then went you know, into her room, and then she already had put the thing there. So that was Holy Mother's care for everyone. And this care of Holy Mother was because everyone for her was her child. That was the thing. See all this. Felt that motherly love, and Sri Ramakrishna had imparted that love, mother's love for in Holy Mother. We know how this uh, sadhana of um, offering of all his sadhana to Holy Mother on Phalaharani Kali Puja. 
Holy Mother was not told earlier, she asked for Holy Mother, everything Puja was there. He asked Holy Mother to sit in the seat of the deity. Holy Mother sat, she did the prayer. Oh, oh Tripura Sundari, please come and take her place and please make her pure and take seat in her. So if she invokes Tripura Sundari, the best benign aspect of the of the Dasa Mahavidya in Holy Mother. And he offers all his fruits. And from that day they say Sarada became Sarada Devi. She is divinized, she has defined by herself, but as if she has become that. And she was imparted the power to work and to for the good of uh, the humanity. That was Holy Mother. And uh, you know how Holy Mother was very few people knew, very few people must even spoke about her, her photograph only became popular after 1953. But um, after that, um, before that also many people came to take initiation from her. Um, our Raja Maharaj and Baburam Maharaj said, Holy Mother's power, you know, Sri Ramakrishna used to choose everyone whether I should give him mantra or not. Because mantra giving is something, mantra has to be effective. It has to be given to a proper person so that he does the sadhana and if his fruits are done. But Holy Mother was so, Sri Ramakrishna used to choose to make disciples. He is fit and he is unfit. She is fit and she cannot do. So he used to choose, see and choose. But Holy Mother, whoever came, she gave mantra. And everywhere she gave mantra, both fruits. They made their, changed their life to, to that. And Sri Ramakrishna's direct disciples were Brahmagyani, they say, people come to us, we could see that he is uh, not able to take the mantra. Like he cannot do that, he is not fit. And then they send them to Holy Mother. Holy Mother never was, those who were poisoned for us, for Holy Mother they are like nectar, they are like children, and she imparts them the mantra, gives knowledge, and that makes them relieve this wall which was not possible to cross the whole